welcome and thank you for tuning in and joining us today for Christian Center Online. Today, we're going to take some time to set aside everything else that's gone on this week and worship. And we would love to be able to do that in person together. But until the stay-at-home order is lifted, this is the way we're going to do that. We're going to gather together, but separately in our homes. So right where you're at, if this is your first time joining us, or if you're a regular with us, I want to encourage you today, we're going to worship Jesus in a number of ways. First, in just a few moments, Mike is going to come and he's going to lead us in some songs. I would encourage you in your home, follow along, sing along with us, and enjoy this time of worship together. Lift your voices as unto Jesus, not just for the sake or benefit of the other people in the room, but for the sake of Jesus himself, knowing that he hears you when you sing. I also want to encourage you, we're going to continue to worship through our giving during this time. There's a text to give number across the bottom of the screen. You can text that number, just text the word give to that number. It gives you an opportunity to give that way. You could give through our website, ccdhs.org, or you could just mail a check into the church. There'll be instructions about all of that on the screen a little bit later. Also, I have a message that I'm really excited about today as we continue to look at the Gospel of Mark. We're going to talk about Jesus who heals us. And so I'm really excited about today's message. And then at the end of the message, we're going to take some extra time today to spend some time praying together. So I want to lead us through a time of, of what we could call guided prayer at the end of the message. And so I want to encourage you to, to set aside everything that could distract you right now and zero in with us because we're going to have a great day worshiping Jesus together in our homes. So join us that way. And then finally, I want to mention a couple of other things. If it's your first time tuning in today, we'd love to get to know you. We'd love for you to get to know us a little bit better. Do us a favor, text the word connect to the number that's on the screen. If you text that word connect to the number that's on the screen, we'll be able to reach out to you, text back, email back, and get in touch with you that way. And then finally, I want to mention this. For those of you, that especially that are like regulars with Christian Center, you've been with us before the stay-at-home order, and you've been with us every week. I want to encourage you. We're doing something as a church right now. We've been talking about it in some of our smaller groups that are meeting throughout the week on Zoom. We're instituting the buddy system as a church, okay? And what I mean by that is I want you to find one person in the church that you can just buddy up with. Not that you're going to be getting together and meeting together, but somebody that you can check on each other at least once a week. Check in, pray for each other, make sure everything's going okay. If somebody's in need, we can help out with that. So do us a favor, find your buddy in the church. It's just like when you were in grade school and you went on a field trip. You had to have a buddy for the buddy system. That's what we're doing right now. So today we're going to worship Jesus. So I would encourage you, zero in with us today, tune in, and we're going to have a great day lifting up Jesus. The God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God.
Let's take a moment and pray, shall we? Father, we thank you. We thank you because today we recognize that in the midst of, of the tension of our age, we see that you are a God that brings peace. So Lord, even though we might be really struggling with this staying at home at this point, I know a lot of us are really starting to feel like we want life to go back to normal. We want things to be as they were. Lord, we recognize that's probably not going to happen for a while, and, and even when it, things do start to go back, it's not going to be the way it was. So I pray, God, that you would do something in us right now to bring the best of what has happened in us in this time, the, the, the rest and the peace and the, the, the new focus that we're gaining in this time to carry over with us into the days to come. And Lord, I pray that you give us the strength and the patience and the endurance and provide everything that we need to get through today. So Lord, I pray as we look into the scriptures that the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth will be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I want to continue looking at the gospel of Mark together. And as we look at Mark's gospel, it's important to remember what we're looking at is a biography written by one of the early followers of Jesus about the ministry and life of Jesus. And so Mark, he gives us just really quick snippets of stories and things that happened in the life of Jesus, just one after another, boom, boom, boom. He just keeps moving quickly. And so we're going to continue in Mark chapter one, but today we're going to look at a story in Mark's gospel where Jesus heals somebody and then goes on to heal a whole lot of other somebodies as well. So today, if there's one thing I want us to draw from this scripture, one thing I want us to draw from this text that we're going to look at, one thing I want to rattle around in our brains throughout this week, it's this one simple idea, and it's only two words. Jesus heals. That's it. Jesus heals. That's what I want us to remember today, that Jesus is the healer, that Jesus is the one that, that does do transformative work. See, other religions have these religious leaders that they tout and that they look at, but Jesus is the one who it's significant. It's everything about who he is, that wherever he goes, he brings healing with him. It's a marker of who God is. It's a marker of who Jesus is. And that one quality should tell us everything that we need to know about God, that Jesus is a healer, that it's his job that restoration and health and, and goodness be wherever he goes. So we're going to read this passage together, and I think it's important for us to remember today just this one idea that Jesus heals. 
We're going to read together from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 34, and it's going to be across the screen, and it reads this way. It says, After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. So imagine for a moment, they go to, to, to Simon and Andrew's house, and when they get there, Simon's mother-in-law is sick. She has a high fever. And they told Jesus about her right away. I love that sentence. They told Jesus about her right away. They didn't, they didn't think that telling Jesus that she was sick was something they needed to keep secret. Instead, they, they brought their need to Jesus right away, which is what we should do. Bring our needs to Jesus right away. So he went to her bedside. He took her by the hand and he helped her to sit up. Then the fever left her and she prepared a meal for them. Now that is awesome. As soon as Jesus heals her, what's she do? She gets up and she says, I'm going to cook for you. She's like so many of the, the moms and grandmas in our lives that that's the way they want to show their love and appreciation. She gets up and she says, I'm going to cook a meal for you. And then that evening after sunset, many sick and demon possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So they're at the house and the whole town is showing up. They're bringing all the sick and the demon-possessed because they've heard that Jesus can cast out demons and he can heal the sick. And they're gathering there at the door to watch. And so Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. A quick word about that last line because it's kind of an unusual one. There's this idea that's been floating around in the church for a long time, that, that Jesus didn't want anybody to know who he was, that he was trying to keep things a secret. And that's not true. It's because people misinterpret lines like this, where he wouldn't let the demons speak about who he was. If you want credibility, the last person that you want to speak on your behalf is a demon. And so Jesus silences the demons, not because he's scared of people knowing who he is, but because he wants people to understand that they have nothing to do with him. And so he silences them and he casts them out. Sometimes when we read a passage of scripture like this, it's easy to look at a simple story like this one. Jesus shows up in town, he heals Simon's mother-in-law, and then she cooks a meal, and then Jesus heals all these other people, and the demon possessed, he casts out demons. It's easy to look at a story like that and try to look for these deeper hidden things going on in the story. Can I just point something out though? When it comes to the Bible, the main things are the plain things, and the plain things are the main things. In other words, the obvious things from a text are the important things in a text. And the obvious thing in this text is that Jesus heals. That's the number one thing that we see. Jesus heals. In fact, I would say it this way. Jesus came to reorder chaos. See, in the beginning of Scripture, we get in the book of Genesis a story of God creating everything out of nothing. In other words, he took and he brought order to the chaos, the nothingness God made into a whole lot of somethingness. And so today, when we look at Jesus as a healer, I want us to think of Jesus healing people in this light, that what he's doing is he's bringing order to chaos, because that's what sickness is, isn't it? Sickness is chaos in our bodies. Sickness is something that's out of order. It's something that's not working the way that it's supposed to. It's like when you show up, you're on a road trip and you show up at the gas station and you gotta go to the bathroom and you go to get the restroom key, but then they tell you it is out of order. When things don't work, it causes an emergency, right? And that's the situation that we're looking at here. Jesus brings order to chaos. That's what healing is. So think of it this way. When we think of Jesus as a healer, does he heal the physical body? Absolutely. But ultimately what he's doing is he is bringing order to the chaos of the world that we live in. So order from chaos means that, that Jesus as a healer can be Jesus bringing peace to our minds. It means that Jesus can bring peace to our lives. It means that Jesus can, can heal our physical bodies. It means that Jesus even has the ability to transform our entire culture and situation, because Jesus came to bring order to the chaos. You see, healing and salvation in the New Testament, they're the same exact thing. We tend to talk about Jesus as the Savior. We talk about people getting saved or receiving salvation in church. That word salvation, it has roots in, in, in ancient Greek and Latin that, that come from that word salve, like an ointment that you would use for healing. The, when we think of salvation, we're thinking of someone that saves and rescues, but also we're thinking of somebody that heals. So Jesus is our healing. He's our salvation. He is reordering the chaos. 
That's what he's come to do. Not just in your physical body, not just in your heart, but in all of creation, Jesus has come to bring reorder to the chaos. In fact, if we're going to be people that follow Jesus, it means that we have to look at the world differently. When we see the chaos and pandemonium of the evening news, I want to encourage us, instead of being the kind of people that get caught up in the panic, to be people of hope. Because following Jesus means being people of hope. It means that we look at chaos and we know a Savior who can bring order to it. When we look at the chaos, we have the Savior who can bring peace. When we look at chaos, we have the Savior who can bring healing. When we look at a a global pandemic, yes, Jesus is a healer. Can he heal someone from the coronavirus? Absolutely. Can he heal someone from cancer? Absolutely. And you know what else he does? He gives us wisdom and doctors and medicine that help to bring order to the chaos. Jesus works miracles, both through medicine and through wonder. And so we have to trust him because that's what it is to follow Jesus. It means to bring hope. It means to be people of hope. It doesn't mean that you're never going to have a bad day. And it doesn't mean that you're never going to feel a little low. But what it does mean is when you look at the world and you look at your situation, you can instead choose to be a person of hope. You see, hope is a shift in perspective. Hope is shifting your perspective. It's not trying to put on a bunch of positive thinking because that's not what Jesus is about. There are times when Jesus weeps. There are times when Jesus feels the weight and anxiety of what he is called to do. So it's not that Jesus wants us to ignore those things. It's that he wants us to choose hope in the midst of them. So we're not going to try to to put on a false idea and pretend that we're more positive than we are. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have a shift in perspective towards hope. And here's a simple way to shift that perspective. When things begin to feel like they're falling apart, remind yourself of today's big point. Jesus heals. When everything starts to fall apart, just stop and say, you know what? No, it's going to be okay. I may feel this way right now, but Jesus heals. And if Jesus heals, then then I can overcome this because with Christ in me, there's nothing that I can't face. Jesus heals. It is a shift in our perspective. In fact, one of the most important fundamental beliefs that we have as Christians is that one day all suffering will come to an end. It's one of the great promises of scripture. Not that Jesus heals us and saves us so that our souls are secure with him in eternity but that one day Jesus is going to set all things right. In the book of Revelation, that apocalyptic text that tells us about the end of the world and the beginning of the kingdom of God, a whole new era, it says that one day God will create a new heaven and a new earth because the old heaven and the old earth will pass away. In other words, the broken, flawed heaven and earth will pass away. A new creation in their place. Jesus bringing order to chaos. His healing and salvation, it begins deep in us and it extends and expands outwards. It's a micro kind of thing. It starts on a small level and it goes macro. It goes wide and it reaches everybody. In fact, I would say it this way. Jesus always begins by healing individuals and then healed individuals become communities of healing. I want to say that again. Jesus begins by healing individuals and then healed individuals become communities of healing. That's what the church is supposed to be. During a time like this, we are supposed to be a community of healing. During a time when there's panic and crisis in our world, it is our opportunity to remember that Jesus heals, to be people of hope and be a community that brings healing in the midst of chaos. To be the kind of people that say, you know what? It's okay. No matter what might rage outside, we have a Savior who heals. We have a Savior who transforms. And today, if you're brand new to this, if you're somebody that says, you know, I don't know that I would call myself a Christian. I don't think that I would even say I'm somebody that believes in Jesus. But if you are telling me that there is hope for me, if you're telling me that Jesus heals and that Jesus' healing can be mine, that Jesus can heal me from addiction, that Jesus can heal me from sickness, that Jesus can heal me from the pain of a broken past, if Jesus can forgive and transform my life, then I want in on that, then today I want to invite you to become an individual who is healed and join our community of healing. I want to invite you to move from the pain of your circumstance into the hope of a Savior. And we do that in a really simple way as a church. We pray the same way every week, and we do this on purpose because we want to keep it simple. See, all it takes is inviting Jesus into your life. And so today, if it's for the first time or the thousandth time, I want to invite you to do just that. I want to invite you to join me in praying. 
one sentence, one simple line where we would commit our lives to Jesus and allow him to be our hope, to allow this Jesus who heals to begin the healing in our souls. It all starts by giving him your life, everything that you are, and making him the center, making him the central figure in everything that you do. And we do that by praying together. So if that's you today, whether you would already say, I am a Christian, or you would say, you know what, I need to give my life to Jesus for the first time, I want to encourage you, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I give you my life. It's that simple. Jesus, I give you my life. Right where you're at, wherever you're watching, I would challenge you today. Pray it out loud. Jesus, I give you my life. And maybe as just a a step of faith, you would close your hands and you would say, Jesus, I give you my life. And you would open your hands as a way of saying, okay, God, I've been holding on to my life for a long time and now I'm giving it to you. Jesus, I give you my life. Today, I want to take time to pray together. I want to take time in our homes to pray together. If you're watching with somebody else, I would encourage you to pray with one another. And if you're watching by yourself right now, I would encourage you to pray with me. See, first, I want to pray for healing in our lives. Maybe there's some of us that are watching right now, and what we really need is is healing in our minds. We've been overwhelmed by the fear and anxiety of of everything that's going on around us. And so today we need healing in our minds. So I want to encourage you, right where you're at, do this with me. Just pause and breathe deeply. Just relax for a moment. Because that's where it's going to start. See, fear and anxiety, they start in our body. So first we're going to calm our body down. And then we're going to come to our Savior with what's going on. And so today, if you need peace in your heart and mind, maybe you could just put your hands on your temples like this. And you just say, Jesus, be my hope. Be my peace. And just rest in it for a moment. Maybe you need healing in your physical body. I would encourage you, in this same attitude of prayer right now, set your hands on your chest like this. And maybe if there's somebody in the room with you that wants to pray for you, they could come and and put a hand on your shoulder as well. And set your hands on your chest like this. Jesus, we believe that you're a healer. So right where you're at, just pray with me. Jesus, be my healer. Heal my body. And let's let him do the miracle today. Today, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, Jesus, I give you my life, we want to hear from you. Do me a favor text the word CONNECT to the the number that's on the screen. And maybe today as you were praying, you just sensed the presence of God bringing peace into your life. Maybe you could drop into the comments below and and let us know about that. Or if that's you, you you prayed today and God did something special in your life, do the same thing. Text the word CONNECT to that number that's on the screen. And when you do, we'll get in touch with you. We would love to hear about what God is doing in your life and walk through it with you. We're going to take a little bit more time to lift our voices to Jesus with one more song of worship. So I would encourage you, join in as Mike leads us in this great song as we sing about Jesus, who is our healer. Let's worship him today.
Jesus, oh, I believe. 